Well, afterwards, the gigs in Blues Moose Cafe, and next to me is Wolf Mail, which is actually his real name. Wasn't that confusing? Play like it's your last gig. I, I try to do that. Um, it's not something I really control. It's just like, once I start playing, I, I really, you know, I just love it. It's, it's my passion, so I just give it everything I've got, you know. You know, it's like when you love a woman, you give everything you've got. Same thing with a guitar. I just grab that guitar, I start playing, and I just, you know, I just give it everything I've got, you know. Um, first of all, um, we expected you were to be a Canadian citizen and then we heard you live in Australia and then you picked up a, a, a Russian band and brought a DVD out live at the Red Square. You're a real globetrotter, aren't you? Yeah, well, I guess I am. Uh, since an early age I started traveling a lot. Uh, I've lived in Canada, I've lived in France, I've lived in, uh, in Los Angeles for 20 years and, uh, and now in Australia for the last seven years. So yeah, um, I've been traveling quite a lot. So yeah, I'm kind of a nomad, I suppose, you know. Is that, um, can you listen that, uh, can you hear that in the music that you are a nomad? Now you're picking up some styles all over the world, or is it still the classical blues with the twist of wolf male? Absolutely. I, I honestly believe that my experience, my non-musical experience, um, are influencing my playing more than the music I'm listening to. It's like, you know, I go to a country, I get to meet people, um, I try new food, new wine, and, you know, that, those experiences, I guess, I suck them up like a sponge, you know, and then when I play music, it just, all those things are just piling up and coming out, you know. Yeah, absolutely, definitely affect, I would say. Who, who do you consider your uh, main influence on playing blues and blues rock guitar? Well, for me, um, the bluesman that I, the first bluesman I've listened to and the one I really love is Elmore James. To me, he, um, he really, w when I listen to Elmore James, I really feel the blues. I, I feel the emotion, I feel the passion, the sadness, and, and I feel the message. Because Elmore James pretty much, if you listen to his stuff, it's pretty much kind of like that one song he kind of does again, but it's, he's got a message and it sounds beautiful. And yeah, I would say he's the, the person that I consider in my book the, the, the top blues man, Elmo James. Are you self-thought on the guitar or, or do you have a, a, a real teacher who, who teach you the tricks? Uh, uh, maybe a couple or two, you, you, may name, you may name them all. Absolutely, I'd be glad to. Um, I've, I've started, yes, when I was 10 years old and uh, I was self-taught until I was 17. And uh, then one day I was in Montreal, Canada, and uh, I'm, you know, I heard this guy playing guitar in, in, a, in a shop, in a store, in a music shop. And um, I went up to him, and I'm like, "Wow, this sounds fantastic! I want to play like him." So I approached him and I said, "Hey, man, you giving guitar lessons?" And at first I was like, "Nah, nah, nah," and then I convinced him, and uh, yeah, and he taught me guitar for about six months, and uh, and. I, I felt that I really learned a lot, you know, because he was like kind of a mentor. And his name is David Goodman. And actually, I believe he's based actually, in Germany now. I'm going to tell you the story. Um, what happened is um, some friends of mine were playing at a club in LA called the Troubadour on Santa Monica Boulevard, a famous blues, I mean, club, music club. And um, uh, at the end of the show, they called me up on stage to jam with them. And they also called up a guy named Randy Castillo. Uh, which uh, at the time was drumming for Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, but I didn't know who he was, you know, I just saw this guy coming up and we played three songs and um, at the end of the show he came up and uh, he said, hey, you know, my band is looking for a guitarist, you want to audition? I'm like, sure, give me my card, you know, and and uh, two days later he called me up and he goes, hey, it's Randy, remember me? And I said, sure. He goes, so, I'm like, what's the name of the band? <laughs> he goes, Ozzy Osbourne. I'm like, yeah, right. I put the phone down, I went up to my um, room and I'm like, look at the Ozzy Osbourne cover. I'm like, oh, that's the guy. Okay. A surprise. So yeah, that, that's how it happened, you know. And um, I mean, I think Randy, you know, maybe thought I could cut it, but, you know, they probably were looking for a more metal kind of guy because I've been blues. I was at the time more probably hard rock blues player, but I still was really bluesy oriented. And, and uh, so uh, after the edition, I was just like, ah, it's cool because it's, you know, it was, it wouldn't have been my thing, you know. But, you know, I had a couple of things in LA too. I was offered uh, to uh, play with Cher, you know, and I turned that down. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's really not my thing. And, uh, Plastic Fantastic. That's right. And Billy Idol too. So, but, you know, but uh, anyway, this, this was, yeah, you know, because I love it too much, you know. I mean, I, I, it's, it's, I just can't do it. You know, I'd rather have a side job doing something else, but playing guitar, I have to love it. You know, I just, just can't do it, you know.
Yeah. Uh, no doubt you're a fan of the Stratocaster. Ever picked up that other guitar to looks of to hear the sound of a Gibson, for instance? Oh, wow. Well, you know what? I did. Uh, the funny thing is, um, I was offered a, a Gibson endorsement um, a years ago. Um, I was in Tokyo uh, touring and uh, I went to the Gibson factory and uh, uh, pretty much, long story short, um, they, um, you know, they said, hey, you should go to the LA factory, try guitars. So I went there, tried some Gibson guitars and I really liked some. And uh, they said, well, what do you think? And I said, well, you know, it's, it's, it sounds like a good thing. And fortunately, they wanted an exclusive endorsement, so I had to drop all the other endorsement. And, you know, they have like famous guitarists like, you know, Jimmy Page, Angus Young, so I would have been a small little fish. So I stay and stuck up with, uh, with, um, with Greg Bennett guitars and Carvin Amps, you know, and they, they give me a lot of support, you know, so. But it's, gives, you know, Gibson are great guitars, but I just feel more comfortable with, you know, the other ones, so, you know. Your new CD um, just released a couple of days ago. Um, the songs, do you write them all yourself? Uh, on that album, yes, nine out of ten, I did. Although uh, my producer, uh, Baby Chan King, uh, helped me with, with you know the producing and some of the lyrics. Um, and also Dennis Walker, uh, from uh, um, the producer of uh, Robert Cray, they they kind of you know, gave me a little hand into uh, arranging. But the songs pretty much, yeah, the, pretty much came from me. Yeah, not Is the tough job writing songs, or do they come easy? <sighs> well, the thing is, it's not that it's tough. It's just like I have no control of it. You know, when it comes, it comes. So I'm happy. When it doesn't, well, I just gotta wait for it. That's you know, it's not something that you can kind of control. You know. You know, so, uh, yeah, but it's, it's a matter of being in the right space and then, you know, suddenly it'll come and then, but you got to come up with songs, yeah. You are, you are in a person who, when the, the CD is cut, everything is okay, that you listen back to a song and say, ah, I know a little lick that could have been good between it. Everything learning. Yeah, probably you do. <laughs> All the time. I mean, it's just like, you know, it's, it's something I'm, you know, it's a, both a good thing and a curse, but, you know, yeah, every time I listen back to a recording, I can always find something I don't like and I could have done better. So it's like, you know, like my producer said, you got to draw a line, you know. You just get a track and then that's it, you know. You, you, you can't, because you can always, you know, do something better. See, to me, music is expression. So right now I'm expressing myself because of who I am. But tomorrow, because of the things I've done, I'm going to be a different person, so I'm going to do things differently. So I have to draw a line. Record it, that's it, and then move to the next one, you know. It's, it's like, it's alive, you know. Is that why you're because of playing the blues? Because you have that feeling, always, yeah, want to do things better and play with your heart. You can play hard rock, but that isn't with your heart. That's technique. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a tough thing because I've, for a long time, you know, it's I've been trying to define what is blues. You know, you know, thinking what is blues exactly? Is this like a, a scale, a pentatonic scale, of chords? And you're thinking, oh, a little bit, but then you're thinking. Okay, what about if B.B. King plays a Madonna song? Is this going to be blues? You know, you got to think about that because he's got so much soul. What are he's going to touch? It's going to be blues, you know. Because he did it with you too. Yeah, there you go, you know. So, so it's 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 a, to me it's it's just yeah. It's I think it's playing from the heart, being honest and being humble, and you know, giving a message. It's 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 a you know that's what I try to do. You know, the future of Wolf Mail. Now you're touring Holland, uh, Germany, a few concerts. You've been back to uh, uh, Moscow in uh, Russia, where you, I think, least popular because you have, uh, yeah, well, um, took a CD, a DVD over there. What, what's, what's the end for Bullmail? The world? Well, I can tell you the, the schedule we've got this year. Uh, we t after Netherlands, we're going to go to Germany. Uh, then uh, I'll be back in Australia for a few weeks. Then in June I'll be touring in Japan, releasing the album. Then I'll be touring Australia, then I'm going to the United States, then I'm going to New Zealand. And then I think by next year I will probably come back to Europe with a new album. That's like roughly the, the, the projected schedule we're going to have. Yeah. Well then, we're going to round up the seventh interview. And thank you for it. And we're going to be, uh, well, I didn't hear the new CD, so uh, I'm expecting the new CD and the next one in next year. <laughs> Wolfman, thank you to Blues Moose Cafe and good luck on the road, man. Pleasure. Thank you so very much. Thanks to okay. you.